In today's episode, we'll be talking about how to convert renters to owners. Why would you do that? When do you do it? And what are the strategies behind that? We'll be talking about all that and more right now. So why would you convert a renter to an owner-financed homeowner? Why would you want to do that? Well, the answer to me is really obvious. You're sick and tired of being a landlord, probably. That's probably the number one reason. Number two, it's time to take your profit and retire head off to Tahiti somewhere where all you have to do is just check your bank deposit for uh, the mortgage payment every month. And maybe number three is you want to get in the fast track to cashing out altogether. So sometimes when you convert people to seller financing your property from you, you can also set in some balloons so that at some point in time they have to get a new loan and pay you off. Also, there's the question of when. A lot of people do this when a problem house becomes vacant. If you have a portfolio of rental houses, say 25 or 50 or 100, do not bother the tenants that are paying you like a clockwork and causing no problems. Why would you go up and kick a sleeping dog? You shouldn't. But as a house becomes vacant, you can start to take some inventory. Is this house lucrative? Is this house in an area where it's still appreciating quickly? Or is this house in a neighborhood that's going down? Is this house a pain in the butt? Does it have a lot of repair calls and maintenance issues? If the answer is yes to those kind of things, then maybe it's time to sell this house on payments. And if you sell this house on payments, that means you'll take a lump sum down payment and you'll carry the balance for 15, 20, 25, 30 years. It's up to you. The cool thing about seller financing your house is you'll no longer be responsible for all those liabilities that you used to be responsible for. Let's face it, when you were a landlord for that house, you were responsible for everything that happened from the front mailbox to the back fence. And believe me, something was happening all the time, right? I don't have to tell you if you're a landlord, you know. Something was breaking every minute of every day. I once had a rent house that broke so often that sometimes I would just go there for entertainment. I would pull up my car on the curb and sit there and watch it break. It was hilarious. Not really. I didn't enjoy it at all. And that's when I decided to sell or finance that house. There are some other strategies too that include renting with selling with owner financing. One of them is you buy a house, you rent it out for at least a year, and you get past long-term capital gains when you go into a different taxing bracket. And then when the house becomes vacant, whether it be at the end of that year or the next few years, whenever it does become vacant, then they go ahead and sell or finance it at that point because they've already held the property for a specified amount of time. Now to achieve a long-term capital gains treatment in your taxes, it is generally thought that that is a year or so. There's nothing in writing that says exactly how long you have to hold it, but there is case law. And the case law seems to suggest that if you rent these properties for at least a year, you can move into a long-term capital gains tax treatment, which is a lot less than short-term capital gains tax treatment. So one of the strategies out there is to rent the houses for a little bit of time. And then once they've crossed the one year mark, they'll sell or finance it at that point. I have had students and people come to me that are so tired of landlording, they just want to convert their whole portfolio, be it 20 houses or 100 houses. And that's what I help them do. One house at a time, two houses at a time. We find out who's in the houses that have been paying good that would rather be the owner for about the same monthly payment. Now, this only works if those people have some kind of down payment. Now, there's debates. If I got a house for sale owner financed and I'm looking at a new customer coming in the door that wants to buy my house, I'm not going to let them in with anything less than a 10% down payment. But if someone's been in my house for seven or eight years and has been right on time and a good person and taking care of that house and has been responsible, maybe I'll think about letting them in that house for less of a commitment than I would normally demand. But that's strictly up to you. 
The biggest question really is, is do they even have any savings that they're willing to put down? And that's the first question you have to ask. So you can go through your rental portfolio, talk to your tenants and start to find out, hey, I'm thinking about selling this house with owner financing. If I was to offer you this house with seller financing at payments pretty close to what you owe now. And when I say pretty close, I would probably bump their payment 50, 75, 100 bucks at least. If I can keep your payment pretty close to what it is now, how much would you be willing to put down for me to consider you as the buyer? See what they say. Some people will make it extremely easy for you. They're willing to put down 20, 30. You might even find out that they've been looking for a house to buy because they thought you would never sell the house and they were about to give that money to somebody else. But you've offered the house to them now and now they want to stay. So you go through all your rent portfolio and at least find the people that are interested in owning your house. That separates this portfolio into two piles. People not interested and people interested. Then you go through this pile of the interested people to find out how many of these people have enough money to make you interested in the sale. And now you got another two piles. You whittle it down to this pile right here. So this is how you would continue on. And once you find the people that want to buy your houses, go with those first. And then as the rest of the houses become vacant naturally, instead of re-renting them, you put them up for sale with owner financing or put them up for sale for cash for that matter, if you need cash. This concludes our segment on how to convert renters into homeowners. If you like that segment, please think about hitting that like button and that share button and also subscribe. I would like to offer you a free copy of my book plus a free webinar called Owner Finance 101. And that book is a hard copy. I'll send it to you in the mail. And the PowerPoint is deliverable digitally. So you'll get the digital download right away. And then in a few days, the book will arrive in the mail. So this is Mitch Steven. I want to thank you for tuning in today. And I will see you at the next episode.